Hey guys, Pastor Brent here. I just wanted to give you a midweek update. I want to tie last week's message to the one that's coming because it's so helpful for what we're facing as a church in our great state and all the things that we're contemplating. We have been talking through 1 Peter, both chapters 1 and 2, and understanding our unity together by, by uniting under the, the, the umbrella of being in the same family. We've been born into this family spiritually. We are uh, loved by a God who's both loved us brotherly and sacrificially and therefore gives us the resources to do the same and then feeds us the same word of God as our meal, our sustenance for us as a family. And so all of that is very powerful, very applicable to us. This week, Pat Peter's gonna give us some other great metaphors and understanding as, as we're building something uh, together that uh, Jesus has given to us as the foundational cornerstone and, and we are stones in that same building, that um, there we are priests in the same temple, which has some incredible implications from Old Testament times to New Testament times. And we're even citizens of the same nation, which is important for us to understand our place as exiles who are elect of God, which is, of course, the theme of 1 Peter anyway. So all of that's going on. We're going in that direction, all with the goal to build unity together as the body of Christ. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's an attack on the church right now that would love for us to be divided that would love for us to just melt under the pressure, love for us to start flinging the arrows at one another as opposed to being unified. And like we've been saying, unity is not uniformity. So we really have to get a handle on what Peter's saying so that we as a, as a body of Christ locally at Faith Evangelical Free Church, but also even collectively in our area and even greater across our nation and world, we have to get a handle on what unity really looks like and the points of disagreement and how we treat one another in those times. All of this points to Peter's big uh, uh, direction in all of this is that we are a unique body, that we are a holy family because our God is holy. Now this has implications for us as a church and right now our atmosphere is coming back to life. There are people coming and, and we have new folks coming visiting our church right now and, and people are pressing through sort of the awkwardness of having to sign up and all of those other inconveniences and, and as we've heard it said, you know, the hoops that we have to jump through and everything. People are pressing through that because the fellowship of the body means more to them than than the uh, particular uh, process in order to get there. And so we appreciate that, we're encouraging that, we're also encouraging those of you that aren't coming out yet to continue watching and engaging online. But uh, we've had a lot of questions, what's the atmosphere like? And of course we have like the B. Lee Center that's open that we're piping some things into, but we have live components as well. Worship is live, announcements live, those kinds of things. Communion will be live this week. And those areas and environments have great energy, and so we would call you to that as, as an option if you're ready. But also we're seeing stronger one-on-one -on -one opportunities. The, the fellowship of the, of the body continues to grow as we have less distractions around us and those kinds of things. Uh, we are still registering people. We know that that's somewhat controversial in and of itself, and we understand we've had many conversations about why um, people have some hang-ups with that, and we get that. Uh, but while we are in a state of compliance, until we see otherwise registration helps us as a church a larger entity pull together our resources plan for the crowd that's coming on the weekend and it also eliminates that awkwardness of, of a position we will never be in or want to be in and that's turning somebody away at the door um, and so we never want to be in that position so if you say you're coming we're we're able to just make that happen so um, so that's what's uh, happening with registration church atmosphere those kinds of things but it also brings us to the larger point of of the somewhat you know continuing questions we get not so much anymore but a lot of the reopening questions is there a point that faith would disregard mandates in other words are we willing to at some point pay a cost for our freedom to worship in the way that we feel is best and freest for us? And the answer is absolutely. That has never been off the table. We don't disagree on principle with those churches that have opened their doors with no restriction. We just disagree with perhaps their interpretation of the facts or the mandates. 
or the timing or even some of the things in which we feel somewhat restricted to because of um, the size of our congregation, that kind of thing. And so we remain in close unity and brotherly love with our fellow churches. And uh, we even stay in good conversation and communication about as they see some of our faces there and vice versa. We're keeping each other abreast and we're, we're letting them know that we get it, you know, and that this is a strange time for everybody. We'll see how the dust settles. But talking about the difference in how churches are doing things and approaching this time, uh, a, a pretty groundbreaking or um, monumental uh, write-up came out this week from Grace Community Church, pastored by the great John MacArthur, whom we love and respect, and, and, and much of the evangelical community has patterned a lot of its teaching and church methods and things off of their strict adherence to the gospel of Jesus Christ and how they conduct themselves as a church. And, uh, and they have been faced with some unique situations in California. This, the shutdown severity has really ratcheted up. And so they felt after initial compliance up till just now, they felt like they had to reverse their uh, position or at least clarify their position and reverse some of their policies in order to keep their doors open. And so they put out a pretty lengthy but very helpful um, write-up that shows what their position is. Um, I got to admit, as I read that, I was like, yes, I get it. Finally, they're saying it, that kind of thing. But at the same time, uh, another ministry that we really appreciate and use called Nine Marks, uh, they're based out of D.C., so you can imagine they're politically involved and have that, that water washing up on their shore all the time. Uh, they wrote sort of the balance to that, not dissuading the Grace Community Church's position or their need to act as they were, but more to give the entire church pause across the nation about understanding that California has to do what they have to do for California and that it's good for us to see what's coming and that kind of thing, but not necessarily to just take blind adherence to what John MacArthur's doing, but, but reason for yourselves in your state based on your mandates, your guidelines, your restrictions, the tone and temperature of your church, all those kinds of things, and still do what's best for the body of Christ that you represent and that you're called the shepherd. And so I appreciated that article too because it leveled me out and helped me understand that we're still approaching this with wisdom but with a lot of tenacity. This isn't something that has allowed any of us to go on vacation or to slow down our ministry. We're perhaps busier now than we've ever been and, and growing up faster, if I dare say, in ways that we never even anticipated. But the conversation is still alive and the debate is still healthy. And um, it's challenging us to know what we stand for and why, and I hope it's doing the same for you. We're going to share a link to both of those articles. One, I think, is buried in the other. So if you look at the Jonathan Lehman story or response to the John MacArthur position, I think he, he has a link for it in that. So we might put one or both on uh, Facebook or YouTube or on our website, somewhere you'll be able to just click the link. It'll take you about 20 minutes perhaps to read through both of them, so set aside some time to digest to, so that you can become better in tune with what we're thinking about and why we are um, operating the way that we are for now. So uh, be encouraged, uh, be blessed, and uh, know that your church leadership is praying for you and is uh, seeking all kinds of ways in which we can remain engaged. We hope that you're availing yourself to those efforts and doing what you can to stay engaged with the larger church body because it is incredibly important, especially now. So God bless you. We continue to pray for you and we love you.